guys, this is Mommy Beluga Investing. Hi there, back again here with me, Rati, in Mommy Beluga Investing. In this video, I'm going to analyze yeah, Wilmar International Limited with stock symbol F34. This video is the continuation of the SGX Straight Times Index series that I have abandoned for a while. At the same time, it was also requested by one of the viewers some time ago. Okay, my quick take for Wilmar are, first, the company is growing via acquisitions, various acquisitions. However, the company earnings doesn't seem to follow the operational growth. As a result, I don't have any plan to make position in Wilmar at the moment. Follow my video as I quickly discuss the company's profile, EPS since 2004, dividend and other numbers. Please consider to subscribe because it means a lot for a beginning YouTuber like me. If you have any comments or input, do not hesitate to put in comment section. It'll probably help me to get more perspective and learn more. Okay, before getting into the data, I read out the disclaimer first as usual. Disclaimer, this is an amateur video. My main intention is to record my journey learning and practicing investing from scratch. Over time, you may find that some inconsistencies in my analysis and conclusions. Please bear with me. My analysis is limited to the public data that I can access and the scope of my knowledge. Both of those can change over time. These videos shouldn't replace any financial advice and neither suggestion to take position buy or sell in the stock market. Please conduct your own research before making any decision. But if you do your own research, I hope this video could be useful somehow. Okay, now let's start from a brief company profile. Wilmar International Limited is a one of Asia's largest agribusiness group. It was founded in 1991 and headquartered in Singapore. Yeah, the Wilmer Group was co-founded by Mr. Kwok Kun Hong. Okay, hopefully I pronounce his name correctly. Okay, and then Mr. Martua Sitorus. The first company form was Wilmar Trading Private Limited, which had a paid up capital of 100,000 Singapore dollar and five employees. Wilmar Oil Palm Business was listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange in 2006 with an initial capitalization, capitalization sorry, of 2.38 billion Singapore dollar. Throughout its 20 years of history, Wilmar has been growing through various acquisitions. There are a lot of acquisitions. Some of them are, in 2005, uh, it acquired PT Cahya Kalbar Terbuka, a producer of specialty oils and fats for the chocolate, cocoa, confectionery industry, bakery and cakes ingredients industry, and beverage and food industry. Then, next, uh, the year after, in 2006, it acquired six plantation companies in Sumatra and Kalimantan, Indonesia. In 2010, it acquired several companies again. One of it is Sucrogene Limited. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Now known as Wilmar Sugar Australia Limited, the largest raw sugar producer and refiner in Australia. Okay, fast forward to 2000. Okay, 2011, okay, not fast forward yet, 2011, it acquired uh, PT Duta Sugar International in Indonesia and then Proser Pine Mill in Australia. Now we're going to fast forward to 2019. Wilmar acquired Kuching Palm Oil Industries and Dirian Berhad. There are many other acquisitions yeah, that I could mention uh, one by one, yeah, including the ones in Africa that yeah, I haven't mentioned yet. So there are many acquisitions throughout its 20 years of history. Wilmar operated a vertically integrated agriculture commodity business at various locations in the world. On the screen, we have Wilmar Global Footprint. From its 2020 annual report, Wilmar's largest operation for edible oil refining is in China with 55 facilities, followed by Indonesia with 27 facilities and Malaysia with, yeah. 
Okay, that was Malaysia and now Indonesia. Yeah. Malaysia wants uh, the Wilmar has 16 facilities. Okay, Wilmar operations uh, is segmented into plantation and sugar milling. I think this is Wilmar most upstream business segment. The segment activity is mainly oil palm plantation and sugar milling activities. From here, it goes to two downstream business segments. Food products. In these segments, the company activity include processing, branding, and distribution of edible products in parallel. And then there's also, uh, yeah, in parallel with feed and industrial products, where this segment of activity consists of processing, merchandising, and distribution of animal feed, non edible palm, and lauric products, oleochemicals, gas oil, and biodiesel. To support the efficiency and productivity, Wilmar seems to have research, research and development business segment. Yeah, 2020 uh, annual report mentioned that it has publication in Nature Communication. It is a pretty high impact factor publication. Uh, however, the uh, report didn't specify the paper details, so I didn't have uh, didn't dig any further. In terms of ownership, the 2020 annual report listed PPB Group Berhad as the largest shareholder with 18.58%. The rest of the holdings are mostly held via custodian accounts as what we can see on the screen. The original founder yeah, uh, still holds significant of Wilmer share, which is 4.07%. It is on the eighth place of the highest shareholder. Okay, so that's a brief preview of Wilmar International Limited. Now let's take a look at their numbers. Okay, so here I plotted earning per share for the last 16 years since 2004. I also added a horizontal green dash line as a guide to zero level. Earning below this line indicates that the company is recording a loss for that particular year. At a glance, okay, let's look at the uh, screen. At a glance, we can see that Wilmar hasn't recorded any loss since it was listed in SGX since 2006. It has gone through a parabolic increase in earnings for the first three years post IPO. That's from uh, 2006 up to 2009. Since then, the earnings generally in decreasing trend till 2016. Some signs of improvement in earnings uh, showed since 2019. Okay, now I like to dig a little deeper for the earning dips as the story behind those dips could give me a clue if those are a temporary growing pains or there were crises brewing on the operation. We start with the 2010 dip. Based on the annual report, the dip was contributed by the weaker performance of the oil, seed and grain segment. This happened amid the commodity volatile situation. 2011 seen Wilmar earning have reco recovered back, which followed by another dip in 2012. Okay, the 2012 dip contributed was contributed by several factors. First is the effect of European debt crisis that impacted agricultural business. The second are the compounding effect of severe drought in US. The third is the volatile performance of the oil, seed and grain in China, which was operating at a loss for the first half of 2012, but managed to record a profit by the closing of year. Then after slight recovery in 2013, Wilmar earning have been declining until 2016. Wilmar's annual report mark 2014 a significant milestone in Wilmar's operation in Africa, but not much mention about the decrease in earnings, though we can see on the screen that there was a decrease in earnings. Then 2015, annual report attributed the profit decline due to the decrease in commodity price as well as loss 
due to currency exchange. This happened in the midst of global economic slowing down. 2016 continuing decline was still affected by economic slowing down. A different situation happened for the dip in 2018. The company revealed that sugar business segment had recorded a loss in 2018, particularly from its Australian sugar miling business. Another loss were also reported from the newly acquired subsidiary that is the Sri Renuka Sugars Limited. Okay, so that's a little review of Wilmer's performance. Now let's take a look at how much of those profits distributed to the shareholder as dividends. To see the sensibility of dividend payouts, so here are plotted three layers of information as usual. Okay, the first one uh, is the dividend payout itself since 2007, which I plotted as red round markers connected by a thick red line, as we can see on the screen. On each of the points, I have annotated with two numbers. The numbers above is the markers, the above the markers are the dividend payouts in Singapore dollars, and the one below are the payout ratios to the respective year's earning per share. As a comparison to the earnings, here I plotted again the earnings per share as a thinner line with the same color. At a glance, we can see on the screen, in my opinion, Wilmar is pretty prudent in their dividend payout. Wilmar distributed less than 60% of its earnings as dividend, except for 2020 profit, which amounted to about 95% of their year profit. For a financial year 2020, Wilmar distributed a special dividend of 6.5 cents per share, along with interim and final dividends. That number add up to 95% of their EPS on that year. Yeah, This special dividend is used to commemorate the successful IPO of the group China subsidiary, Yihai Kerry Arawana Holding Co. Limited or YKA. YKA commenced trading on the Sension Stock Exchange uh, next, uh, Chi Next Board on 15 October 2020. Since this is a special dividend, it might not happen again. Now, this is what a dividend hunter might be waiting so far. Dividend yield history. Here I plotted the average dividend yield per year as the round markers. At each of the markers, I placed a error bar, which represents the range of yield over that year. The variation in a year is caused by the volatility level of the share price. The yield increased if the share price decreased, and vice versa. Let's see on the screen now. We can see that the dividend yield is hovering between 2 to 3%. In some perfect storm, it could raise up to 5%. But the good news is that even with only 2% yield, it is still better than banks' deposit rate in Singapore. The majority we can get around 2% per annum, which is already good. Okay, But how? so far, I'm not that excited, though the dividend yield is yeah, considerably good. But anyway, let's see the market valuation. Okay, to see Wilmar's market valuation, here I plotted four layers of information. They are first the price, which represents market valuation of the company. It is also the easiest information that I can obtain. I can use the search term Wilmar International and it will pop me with this kind of graph. But price alone is sometimes misleading for the value of the company and its prospect. So I'll include some fundamental indicators to help me to decide. The second layer of information is the 10 times earning multiply, which here I plotted as a dashed green line. 10 times earning multiply can be considered as the price where price to earning, that is the PE ratio, is 10. For me, I consider 10 times earning multiply has two purposes. The first one is that it indicates the price where I expect where I have higher chance to break even within 10 years. You could plot 5 times earning multiply if your investment horizon is only 5 years. 
The second one is that as a consequence for the first one, I'll consider share price above 10 earning multiply to be expensive. Then the third layer of information is the 15 times earning multiply. With the same principle as the 10 times earning multiply, price above this indicator will be deemed as expensive. Here I plotted the 15 times earning multiply as dashed yellow line, just like the traffic light. I'll start feeling nervous and be more cautious if the price crossed this line, particularly for non-growth company. Okay, then I also add the fourth layer of information, which is the 20 times earning multiply. Here I plotted as a dashed red line. I will consider the share price to be super expensive if it ever crossed this line. For non-growth company, I consider to cut down my position if this happened. Okay, but those uh, are my consideration without looking at the historical price movement. Now, let's look at what's going on with Mil Wilmar share price. Okay, let's look at the screen. At a glance, I could see that market is valuing uh, Wilmar as a growth company. Okay, in that value, the market price mostly following the 10 times earning multiply instead of the 10 times earning multiply as my standard. There are several occasions that the price exceeds the 20 times earning multiply. For example, in 2007, 2008, and briefly in early 2001. Yeah, 2007, to, and, and then 2021, 2021. When that happened, the share price then subsequently corrected down to its 15 times earning multiply. So I guess from that pattern, uh, Wilmar's uh, PE15, yeah, PE15 will be Wilmar running support level. Okay. So here I add the price annotation for each of the uh, line here, okay, uh, each of the PE uh, value, PE ratio value. Okay. Based on the current 15 times earning multiply, I will put uh, sound asleep price at $3.57, $3.57 uh, as the yeah comfortable price or reasonable price for me. And then as for as of 24th of September 2021, when this video was prepared, Wilmar Holding was at 4.08 Singapore dollar, which is slightly above its 15 times earning multiply earning per share, sorry, and it's lower than it's uh, 20 times earning uh, per share. Okay, now wrap up. Yeah, in conclusion, the company is growing by acquisition. However, the company's earnings doesn't seem to follow its operational growth. As a result, I don't have any plan to make any position in Wilmar at the moment. Wilmar may be an interesting company, but I'm not excited in making any position yet. The current price is slightly over my reasonable price, and the performance and the valuation seem to be outshined by UMS and Valuetronics that I have discussed in the past. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave comments and if this video is useful for you, please subscribe to my channel. It's free for you and it means a lot for beginning YouTuber like me. I'll see you again in my next video. Bye-bye.